Hello and welcome to freephotoshop.com and this week's free video tutorial looking at creating and using actions here inside of Photoshop. Now just in case you're wondering what actions are, they're basically a form of automating long and complex tasks on multiple images. An action is a series of recorded commands that you can play back onto different images in order to save time. And what we're going to do here in this video is create a basic action test it to make sure it works and then use it on a batch of photographs I have waiting for us inside the bridge. For now I have this image open on screen. It's a photograph taken from the entrance to Arches National Park in Utah in the United States and we're going to start with a scenario of wanting to email these photographs off to a friend or a family member and instead of just sending off the original images that are going to be fairly big files because after all, they were taken in this instance on a 5 megapixel digital camera, so we're talking a couple of megs for each photograph. We want to downsize them and add a border around the outside just to make them a little more presentable to those that are going to view them. Now if you did this the manual way, then you'd need to carry out exactly the same modifications to each image. And if you have, say, 50, 100 or even thousands of images, then it's going to take quite literally days. Instead, we're going to create an action to do all the work for us. So I'm going to start things off by closing the navigator, the histogram and the info palette up here, and then reposition the remaining two palette clusters. Not something I'd usually do, by the way, but I want you to be able to see the actions palette over here and the layers palette down here. Now you can see that I already have some action sets available to me here. Photoshop does come as standard with a whole load of custom actions, to access them, all you need to do is come up to the little wing menu icon here and select that. And then come down inside this menu and select the actions from the bottom here you want to load up. For now we're going to create our own action. And as a rule, all actions must live inside an action set, which we can create by clicking the little folder icon down here at the bottom. And that's going to prompt you to name the set. So I'll go ahead and call it Free Photoshop's actions and then click OK to create it. Now with the set active I'm going to click the new action button and now we've got to give the action itself a name and it's always best to specify the most accurate name we can just for keeping things tidy if not for anything else. I'm going to go ahead and call this resize 1024 with frame we can also choose a different set to have this action in. I'm going to stick with the one we've created a few moments ago. We can also set a shortcut by assigning a function key along with either the shift or control keys or both. That would be the shift and command keys if you were watching this on the Mac and with a Mac in mind. And finally you can assign a color to the action just to make it easier to spot when these things start building up. When you're happy with what you've entered as a name here, then it's time to hit the record button. So we now have entered the record mode and every significant action we carry out will be recorded by Photoshop inside this particular action. And just to note by the way, recording actions is not a time sensitive operation. So there's no need to hurry through any of the actions you want to perform. You can just sit back and think about what your next move is going to be. In this case though, I already know what actions I want to carry out, so I'll start by resizing the image, and I'll do that by coming up here to the Image menu and selecting the Image Size dialog box. Now I'm going to make sure that Scale Styles, Constrain Proportions and Resample Image are all ticked, and I'm going to change the resampling method to Bicubic Sharper, Then I'm going to come up here to the Width option and input 1024. And as a result of having constrained proportions turned on, we'll automatically reduce the height by the same ratio, which turns out to be 768 pixels. I'm going to hit OK to accept the changes I've made, and not only do our changes get applied to the image, but they get recorded over here inside the Actions palette. So you can see that we now have an entry inside our action called Image Size. And if I twirl open the Image Size hierarchy, I can see all the information that's been saved as part of that action state. So we've got the width, the fact that we want the scale styles and constrained proportions, 
and finally that we want to use by cubic sharper interpolation when downsampling the image. Now we're still recording by virtue of this little record button still being active but we didn't record the fact that I twirled open the image size information because it's not recognized as a significant action. The same goes for zooming. If I go ahead and zoom out here to the 100% view size and then back into the 50% view size, we don't record those details over here in the actions palette either because they're not significant operations. There are some other things that the actions palette doesn't record, things like the pen tool, and anything you do with the brush tool, would you believe? So things like the history brush, the clone tool, the dodge tool, and the healing brush, for example, will not be recorded into an action. Anyhow, we're still recording, so let's get started with this border we want to add. I'm going to go ahead and select the entire image by coming up here to the Select menu and choosing the All command. And then I'll come back up here to the Select menu once again and choose this time the Modify command and select the contract option from there. We'll input something like 25 pixels here and click OK. Then we'll come back up here to the select menu once again, back into modify, and this time choose the feather option, and we'll add say a five pixel feather to the selection outline and hit the OK button. Then we'll come back up here to the select menu, which you're probably sick of by now, there are keyboard shortcuts available by the way, and you can use keyboard shortcuts inside of Actions, but I'm just keeping things simple here by using the menu items. But this time we're going to choose the Inverse command, and we're now selecting the border of the photograph rather than the interior area. Now I want you to click on the new layer icon down here in the Layers palette, and then come up here to the Edit menu and select the Fill command. Now we want to fill with a pattern, and I'm going to select the wood option and if you're not seeing this particular pattern or you want to suss out an alternative then you can click on the wing menu over here and just select a group to load up. I'm going to stay with the wood version here though. Next I'll make sure that the blending mode is set to normal and the opacity is all the way up at 100% then I'll click OK to apply this fill to the confines of the selected area of the image. Now we've got two things left to do. Firstly, I'm going to revisit the select menu and choose to deselect the image. And that's great. Finally, I'm going to double left click on the layer name to change the name of the layer to frame. Okay, that's cool. Now I can see the image without the frame if I click the eyeball here at the side of the frame layer. And then I can see it with the frame by once again clicking that eyeball. It's a nice little effect we've got going there, I'd say. Now we've finished creating the action. I'm going to go ahead and tell Photoshop that we finished creating the action so it can stop recording all the operations I'm performing on screen here. And I can do that by hitting the stop button down here at the bottom of the actions palette. OK, so let's just increase the size of the actions palette here and then just twirl up the first operation inside the actions we created. So now inside the action we created, we have a list of recorded commands that we can apply as one action to any image we want to. But before we move on to that, let's just review the steps we've created here. So the first operation we recorded was the change of the image size. And remember we can twirl open any of these steps to see the exact details relating to the operation. Next we created the selection. Then we contracted the selection. Then we feathered it. Then we inversed it, and this time we notice we don't get an option to twirl open the command because there are no options associated with it. Okay, so then we created a new layer, then we filled it, and if we twirl this command open, we'll see the exact pattern we used to create the frame. Mm -hmm. 